The Whistler. That whistle. The Whistler. of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now, The Whistler's strange story. Murder in Haste. Albert Taylor was two people. To the Cafe Society crowd in Miami, he was the charming young husband of a silver fortune from Denver, aged 45, amply mature, and a little crotchety. To his wife, Helen, the silver fortune, he was something else again, an unpleasant little boy whose unpleasantness had to be bought off with hundred-dollar bills instead of chewing gum. This made for friction, of course. After three years of marriage, Helen was heartily sick of both Alberts, and more careful with the hundred-dollar bills. And Albert, too, had reached the saturation point. As a matter of fact, the unpleasant little boy was on the verge of a tantrum. Albert, is that you? Yeah. Albert, I'm awfully upset. Oh, what now? My bracelet, the diamond and emerald one. I put it in the drawer of my vanity last night, after the party. Well, what about it? It's gone. I've questioned the servants and they Did don't... you, uh, call the police? No. Good. What do you mean? I told you I'd get money somewhere, Helen. You took it? Of course I took it. I see. And what did you do with it? I sold it, of course. Oh! What did you expect? Think I'm going to sit up and beg you for every time I need five dollars? Oh! Sure, that's what you want, isn't it? Come on, come all. Watch Albert, the trained terrier. Eats, sleeps, walks, talks, thinks like a human being. That's enough, Albert. You bet it's enough. I'm sick of it. I'm through being your favorite charity. You don't know how right you are. Well, what does that mean? It's very simple. I'm going to call the police and tell them you've stolen my bracelet. Oh, wait a minute. Don't be ridiculous. Get away from me. Give me that phone. Let go of my hand. Why, you... What? You nagging... Oh. Mr. Disagreeable... Albert! Albert! Oh, you want to watch I'm me sorry. jump, don't you? You want to crack the whip and watch me jump? Oh, you're hurting me. Yes. Let go, please. I'll hurt you all right. Oh, Albert. I'd like to shake you until... Oh, I'd like to shake you until your teeth fall out. Albert. You... Well, Albert. Why don't you do something? Why don't you go over there to the hearth and help her up? Or perhaps you're not as dazed as you look standing there in the middle of the room. Maybe even now you realize Helen isn't going to get up because she struck her temple on the end iron when you hurled her across the room. Yes, Albert. She's lying there so very still because she's dead. <laughs> With the prologue of tonight's story, Murder in Haste, another strange story by The Whistler. And now, back to The Whistler. be no more ugly squabbles over money. No more jumping through hoops for Helen. 
Because the last argument was final, wasn't it? So final that Helen lies dead in front of the heart. A minute later, you've decided on the only course of action possible. You leave her in her bedroom and lock the door. The servants in their separate quarters are used to your arguments and probably have paid no attention. Two hours and twenty minutes later, you're standing on the observation platform of the limited express bound for Jacksonville and points north. Nice night. Oh, <laughs> I, I didn't hear you come up. Sorry. I said it was a nice night. Uh, yeah, yeah. I saw you running for the train when we were pulling out. Just made it, didn't you? Yeah, it was kind of close, all right. Yeah. You been in Miami long? Uh, no, no, been fishing off the Keys just a week or so. I see. Uh, my name's Ricketts. Glad to know you. I'm, uh, uh Brown, Richard Brown. Uh-huh. You going up to New York, Brown? That's right. Well, I, uh, I guess I'll be getting inside, Ricketts. Good idea. I'll go with you. You knew it the minute he opened his mouth, didn't you, Albert? Ricketts is a plain-clothes cop. And there can be only one reason why he's so interested in you. He's right behind you as you walk back through the train to your seat. And you're wondering if he'll sit beside you when you stop there. Then when you're ten feet from it, it hits you. You realize why he's following you. Your luggage with your initials E.T. on it is in the baggage rack over the seat. And Ricketts is just waiting for you to stop there. You hold your breath and keep on going. Uh, Brown? Yeah? Isn't this your seat? Why, n- no, no, I have a compartment up ahead. Oh, I see. Well, good night, Brown. Good night. There's only one place to go, the club car and the bar, where you can sit for a minute and think. Yes, sir. Uh, make it a Manhattan. Uh, dry. Dry Manhattan. Right, sir. Thank you. Oh, is this your magazine here, sir? What? Oh, oh no, no. Uh, may I look at it? Sure. Thank you. Are you uh, going to New York? Uh, yes. Well, it'll be cold up there this time of year. A lot of snow and all that. Yes, I suppose so. <laughs> you know, I'm as excited as a kid. I haven't seen snow for an age. Matter of fact, I haven't set foot in America for, well, five years. Oh, it's great to be back. I get a kick out of just talking to Americans again. Yeah, yeah. I, I was sitting in my compartment a few minutes ago and you, uh, thinking you that have I... a compartment? Oh yeah, yeah. A couple of cars ahead. Oh, uh, my name's Brown, Mister Jameson. Uh, uh, Leslie Jameson. Jameson. Wait a minute. You're not the uh, the mystery writer. <laughs> I, I'm afraid I am. Yes. Here you are, sir. Draw them in hand. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, here's to you, Mister. What's the matter? Uh, oh, nothing. Say, uh, say, Jameson. Hmm? Why don't we go to your compartment? Uh, be quieter there. We could have the drink sent Why, in. of course, if you'd like. Yes, Albert, the compartment would be quieter. And you'd feel a little more comfortable. Particularly since you noticed your friend Mr. Rickett stroll into the bar and sit down. Still hunting for the occupant of your seat, no doubt. Mr. Jameson finds the compartment pleasanter, too. Well, a man can't stay forever in Buenos Aires and continue to write for the American public. Has to keep in touch, you know. Uh, Don't you think so? Hmm? Oh, oh, yes. Yes, of course. So you say you left Buenos Aires, huh? Yes, planned to anyway, but made it a little earlier on account of that nasty business with my assistant. Ah, yes, I see. Well, Mm -hmm. I'll probably go back in a year or so. Did you ever ever read anything of mine, Brown? I can't say I've done much reading in the detective storyline. You have a serial running in one of the magazines right now, haven't you? Yes. Murder in Haste. I don't suppose you're reading it. No, I'm sorry. If I'd known I was going to meet the author, I'd have boned up on it. Oh, don't apologize, (laughs) Brown. Well, how about a nightcap before we turn in, eh? Oh, it's early yet, Jameson. Surely you're not going to give up the ship so soon. Well, I've got to confess I'm a little bush. I've been rattling on like a magpie all evening. Yeah, there you are. Oh, thanks. Wow, that's a 
It's beautiful brandy. None better. Well, Brown, what do we drink to? Oh, <laughs> I have it. It's a crime, Brown. <laughs> Mighty profitable business, for me at least. Yeah, here's to crime. <sighs> uh, you know, that's odd. Murder is my business, and yet I've never in my life seen a murdered man. Not a fact? No, never been in a police court. Hardly ever known a policeman. <laughs> I'm really sort of a phony when you get right down to it. Well, Brown, it's been great talking to uh, you, but I... Uh, tell me more about your agent. You were saying you've never met him personally? Oh, Farrell. Well, he's a great agent. I've often wondered what he looks like. Sometimes I think he must be a magician with a long beard, the way he pulls royalties out of a hat. <laughs> oh, sold my leading character to a radio series. Wow. You've never even been to New York? Never. Probably the only man in the business who can say that. Well, Brown, it's close to midnight. Uh, look, and Jameson, I, what I... about the cereal you're running? Maybe you could uh, bring me up to date on it. And I'll I... tell you about it tomorrow, Brown. Right now, I'm awfully tired. Oh, it's early yet. Now, see here, I don't want to be rude, but I'll have to ask you to... Good Lord, what's that? I'm trying to stop. Stop this way. Back up! An open switch, a signal down, and the southbound local is suddenly there on the same track without warning. It's over in a split second, and then you open your eyes, Albert. You're all right, miraculously safe, in the tangled network of steel and splintered wood that used to be a Pullman car. And there's Leslie Jameson. He wasn't so lucky, Albert. There's nothing you can do for him now. The other end of the coach is in flames, and they're moving towards you. Finally, you manage to get out. I've got to get out. Through this window. What's this glass? Here, let me help you. Oh, give me a hand. Uh, That's it. Uh, oh, thanks. You all right? I, I think so. I'm a little dizzy. Oh, sure. Oh, it's you, Mr. Brown. Oh, the rickets. Yeah, you're lucky. This coach got it worst of all. Look at that fire. Yeah. Got out just in time. Hey, that fellow you were drinking with at the bar went to your compartment with you. He's still in there? My compartment? Pretty sure he's Albert E. Taylor murdered his wife in Miami. Is he still there? No. No, he he, he left a few minutes before the crash. Uh, well, you better get on ahead, Mr. Brown. Yeah. i got to give him a hand here. Can you make it up to the crossing? Yeah. There's a highway restaurant up there. Sure, sure. I'm okay. Thanks. Okay, Brown. Take it easy. Oh, well. Well, Albert, you stand there dazed for a minute, watching the fire move closer. Then you decide to take a chance. Crawl back to Leslie Jameson's body. Take his wallet, his ring and watch. Exchange them for your ring and watch. Engraved, to Albert with all my love, Helen. Then as the flames move close, you find his briefcase and bag and crawl out with him. Ten minutes later, you stagger into the highway restaurant at the grade crossing. Say, uh, one of you fellas can help me. I... Hurt, mister? Oh, we got the doc in the back room. Come on, no, 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 I'm all right. I just want to get out of here. I thought I could hire a car or get a bus to New York. You were in the wreck? Yeah. Say, I'm the AP correspondent here. Could you give me a name? Uh, I'm Leslie Jameson. Le- Leslie Jameson. Say, aren't you the fellow who writes those murder mysteries? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, if that ain't a coincidence, Frank. Only last night you and me made that yeah, bet. Yeah, yeah, now we can settle it once and for all. Yeah, we was betting which one would turn out to be the murder in that serial you're running in a post. Oh, well, that's very flattering. Now, I wonder if you could help me about the bus I mean. Hey, Mr. Jameson, could uh, could you give us an advance tip on the murderer? Yeah, then we won't have to wait for the magazine to come out tomorrow. Who was it, Mr. Jameson? Who? Well, I don't think that would be... a cup of coffee, would you? Yeah, sure. Oh, Ricketts. Oh, pretty rough out there. Three cars gone. What are you guys standing around here for? You've been out there and looked at it? Well, I, I gotta stand by the I'm counter. a reporter, pal, and I'm getting a story. Or I was until Skip you... It. How do you feel, Brown? Brown? <laughs> That's Leslie Jameson, the writer. Huh? I thought your name was Brown. Well, of course I... Well, you know how it is. Here's your coffee. Thanks. No, Mr. Brown, I don't know how it is. How is it? Leslie Jameson, famous mystery story writer. Well? Traveling incognito. Well, you see, Ricketts, I didn't want to... Oh, I get it. Uh, we've been reading Mr. Jameson's serial in the Post, uh, Murder in Haste. Had a little bet with Frank here on who the murderer was. Oh, I can tell you that. I read the last installment last night. Hey, yeah? Sure. Got it at a newsstand in Miami. Well, we ain't got it here yet. Well, Mr. Jameson, who done it? 
Well, I I don't want to spoil the story for you. You ought to finish. <laughs> I'm afraid we won't buy another copy of the magazine. Yeah, yeah, come on, Jameson. Well, it, it's a matter of, of ethics. A writer. What do you can... mean, ethics? I know how it ends. Sure, Jameson. I can tell the boys I got it straight from the author's mouth. Come on, now, what goes? Well, I uh, I don't want. To... I got your car, Lieutenant. Oh, good. I'll be right with you. Hey, you guys know anyone who wants to go to New York? I got a car and I want someone to share the drive in. Well, Jameson, sure. Yeah, you said go. you were going to New York, didn't you, Jameson? Well, as a matter of fact. Well, I you can know. come with me, huh? Give me a hand with the driving. Come on. All right. Oh, but first, give him a break. Tell him who the murderer was. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It, it's against my principles. Uh, well, it's your business. Come on. Hey, it was the old lady did it. <laughs> That hotel space in New York, Jameson? No, not yet. I thought I'd arrange that when I arrived. <laughs> you haven't been around much lately, I see. Probably isn't a room to be had. That bad? Worse. Well, I think I might be able to fix you up at the Midtown. I know the manager oh, there. No, I couldn't possibly. Oh, forget it, Jameson. Glad to help you out. Fix him up, Walter? Oh, I think so. Uh, just sign the register, Mr. Uh... Jameson. Leslie Jameson, the writer. Well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> Look, I, I don't want to put you out. Oh, nonsense. We're honored, Mr. Jameson. Uh, I'm a mystery fan myself. I want to tell you that murder and haste has me fooled right up to the last page. Oh, Peters. Yes, sir? Uh, this is Mr. Leslie Jameson. Now, get the boys over. I want to take a few pictures. Pictures? No, no, no. Wait a minute. I don't want any oh, pictures. Oh, nothing to it, Mr. Jameson. Just a couple of the boys from the Star Express... I uh, know you're tired, but it won't take long. And Peters, yes? have some flowers sent up to Mr. Jameson's room. We'll have the pictures taken there. Uh, Peters is our press agent, Mr. Jameson. He'll take care of you. Oh, I certainly will, Mr. Jameson. Right this way. Say, uh, look here, Peters. You look like a reasonable man. I never have my picture taken, and I don't intend to stand for it now. <laughs> you just don't know New York newspaper photographers, Mr. Jameson. It's, it's much easier if you give in. What'll happen if I refuse? <laughs> You'll find out. And you did find out, didn't you, Albert? You were helpless. There was nothing you could do. They came, they saw, they took pictures, and all you could do was rage and try to keep your face covered. And that only made a better story for them. They were delighted, Albert. The next day, there are pictures of you in the tabloids, hiding your face under the caption, Leslie Jameson, mystery author, stages publicity scene in room at Midtown Hotel. And to complete the success of your change of identity, the second page of the same paper carries the news that you, Elbert Taylor, wanted for the murder of his wife in Miami, perished in the train wreck. You're all mixed up now, aren't you, Elbert? But you almost wish Helen was with you again to make the decisions for you like she used to. And then suddenly there's nothing for you to do. The decision is all made. Yes? Uh, Mr. Jameson? Yes? Uh, Mrs. Jameson is on her way up. What? Your wife. I uh, assumed it would be all right to tell her that... Uh... No, no, never mind. Hello, Leslie. Oh, uh, what are you... Uh... Maybe I'd better come in. Well? Well, what? All right, what are you going to do about it? You're an awfully simple sort, aren't you, Mr., uh, whatever your name is? All right, I suppose I am. How did you expect to get away with it after all the publicity? All right, where is he? What have you done to now, him? Now, wait a minute, Mrs. Jameson. I can explain. Maybe you'd better. Your husband was killed in that train wreck in Florida. I, uh, I had reasons for wanting to disappear, so I took his identity. I never meant to keep it up. Now, if you'll just... Just what? Now, look, there's nothing we can do for your husband. Now he was killed. You believe that, don't you? I don't... Well, know. I'm going to leave town. Now, all I ask is that you forget you ever saw me. I see. What are you... What are you going to do? I, uh, 
I could go to the police, no. of course. Wait a minute. Wait. I, uh, I can make it worth your while to... Oh, stop simpering. Does anyone know you here in New York? No. Well, that's very fortunate. You see, well, Leslie and I, we didn't get along. As a matter of fact, we'd been separated for some time. He said he was cutting me out of his will. So, with Leslie dead, I don't get anything at all. But, with Leslie alive... Wait a minute. You, you wouldn't... Why not? He could retire right now and live off his royalties without doing another lick. You want me to, 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 to keep this up? Of course. Don't be ridiculous. A dozen reasons why I can't. He'll discover it in a week. You, uh, you have his package. Yes. And I know his signature. I can imitate it perfectly. I know his background like a book. You may as well get used to it, Mr. Jameson. I tell you, I won't do it. It's the most fantastic thing I ever heard There's of. There's a Lieutenant Ricketts down in the lobby. You know, he seemed quite interested in, uh, in our uh, relationship. Of course, if you like, I'll bring him up to date. All right, Mrs. Jameson. Oh, darling. Just call me Ruth. Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, there's a dear. Ruth. Ruth. Yes, what is it? I tell you, this can't go on. You're spending money like a child. $28,000 in three months besides the deposits I made to your account. Why, we're behind in the rent. The maid hasn't been paid. Just look at these bills. Look at them. I haven't got a penny. Are you all through? You know, there's your quarterly royalty check due tomorrow. That'll only pay part of the It's bills. not paying any of them, darling. It's going into my account. Oh, I see. Maybe you've got a fast way of getting out from under these bills. That's your worry, dear. Not mine. Five, seven, fourteen, thirty-two. Uh, having trouble... Oh, nothing at all, sweetheart. It's just that my account's overdrawn by $500. Of course, you could finish your book, dear. Oh, sure. Finish the book. Write a Leslie Jameson mystery novel. Well, then I suppose you just have to think of something else. Ruth, be honest with me. Actually, how long do you intend to carry on with this? Mm, indefinitely, dear. You know, I know when I have a good thing. You mean, then, there's no end? Oh, there is, if you want one. There are always the police, of course. Will you quit throwing that up to me? You could be decent about it, you know. There could have been plenty without you bleeding me to I death. I think I've been pretty fair Six with you. Now. No sleep. Hounded day and night. I can't eat. This isn't getting us anywhere. Trying to dodge my shadow. I'm getting nowhere. Afraid all the time. This dagger hanging over my head. Robert, what happened to you? Albert, no, get a hold of you. No way out, is there? What? I'm trapped. What? Yeah, I run into a corner. There's no Albert. way to turn. Albert, stay no away way from to turn, me. is there? What are you doing? No way to turn. Albert. Yes, sir. You're... You're the desk sergeant? That's right. What can I do for you? Well, you, you can take this down. I, I uh... What's the matter, pal? I, I just killed my wife. The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's story. Now, back to the Whistler. Well, Elbert, for the first time since that awful night in Miami, you feel relaxed. It's over now, isn't it? The hounding, the fear, the dagger hanging over your head. They're gone now. You sit down in a chair by the sergeant's desk and start to tell him the whole thing. And then I wandered around the streets all night. I thought about running away again. And then it all seemed so, so useless. So you came into the station and spilled it, huh? Eh? Aren't you 
Going over there? We've been there. Found her an hour after you did it. I see. You may as well know that she's not my wife. Yeah, yeah, we know that, Mr. Jameson. She was your assistant in Buenos Aires. What? You see, she was shaking you down, huh? What'd she have on you? My, my, my assistant. Oh, that's right, your assistant. Have you, uh, had a lapse of memory or something, James? The assistant? Yes, I remember. Now tell me, Jameson, remember. what was she threatening to take to the police? Okay, but a three-year-old would have known it was a bluff. That's the last thing in the world she would have done. No, you don't know her. She would have done anything. Not if it met her neck, pal. Huh? You have got a bum memory, Jameson. It was all over Bonas Aires six months ago. She's wanted down there. For murder. Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment. This program produced by George W. Allen with tonight's story by Eleanor Beeson, music by Wilbur Hatch. This is Marvin Miller speaking.